this is Sir Tap Tap, and this is Last Man 3, the first world, anyway. Um, and I decided to take an opportunity to do a bit of a critique. Because I found the game incredibly painful to play, to be <laughs> a bit blunt. So, here's the first level. It's supposed to be easy on the first level, right? Let's just... Um, what? What? You might notice you can stand on snails, but sometimes they kill you. The, yeah, the front of the snail kills you. Not sure why that makes much more sense than the shell killing you. But yeah, we can make it over here, though, with a very well-timed jump. And there's a spinny card in the middle of space that kills you for some reason. So yeah, you can get past this level with a really, really well-timed jump here. And it doesn't... it seems like that's not supposed to be possible, for one thing. I guess these are spike things. You should really... um... these could be more clearly, like, dangerous. I had no idea what the hell those are supposed to be when I first played. I still don't know what they are. I just know that they kill you. Kind of. And there are these guys. That I guess they're trying to help you or something. And you can go over on this platform, and there's really no reason for it to be there, so... Um... Yeah. Oh, and the character... the way the character dies is really awkward. You, um... you die, and then you can continue to bounce on enemies. Um... And you control yourself as you fall. I have no idea why. It just kind of unnecessarily prolongs the death animation. Which is fun, because the game is really frustrating, and... You know, that just makes it slightly worse. But yeah, these platforms, I guess... Okay, so, yeah, this takes... this requires explanation. On the first level, I have to explain something. Yeah, not good. So, these platforms only appear if you're turning to the left. Um, I'm not sure how you're supposed to know that unless, you know, it was something in a previous game. But even if it was, um, don't expect that people have played the entirety and understood and remembered everything from every previous game in the series. So what you're supposed to do, apparently, is to ride a snail. Except even that is kind of awkward. So yeah, let's ride a snail. You gotta be looking to the left for those platforms to appear. Actually, forget the snail. Okay, also the controls, really friggin' awkward. And the platforming can be really precise, like falling on that spring down there. That's not a good combination at all. And to get those... To get these, uh, yeah. To get these platforms to appear, you have to be looking left. The fun thing is, when you jump, and if you, you look in the direction that you are currently moving. So if I want to turn left mid jump, I have to move so far that I'm actually, um, taking. I'm actually going a certain speed to the left. So it's really awkward to turn around in mid air, like incredibly painfully awkward. So, it's, um, not a good way to get past those. What you're apparently supposed to do, and I have no idea how you're supposed to figure this out without lots of experimentation, is to ride the snail. You can do it with a well-timed jump, but riding the snail works fairly well. Sounds like a euphemism. But yeah, also, if you ride the snail, sometimes you just fall off here. I think the character must catch the edge or something, but yeah, you just stay on here. And if you turn to the right, the snail will fall through when you freaking die. So don't look to the right. And have I mentioned these platforms are amazingly painfully frustrating, and they have no place ever being on a first level? Especially not when I don't know, you know, there's no introduction to them, there's nothing that explains to you, oh, you can avoid these platforms by doing X, or, you know, stuff like that. The character is also painfully slippery. Combine that with, you know, pixel-perfect, precise jumping uh, makes this game incredibly painful. I have never actually beaten a full level in it, I just wanted to explain a lot of things that went wrong. Also, the design of what's going on is often very, very random, like this box here. There's a whole lot of distracting elements that really have no point in being there. There's also this. I don't... I don't even know what to do here. 
So that's good. Okay, I'm stuck. Well, that's great. Um, this is a platform that if you stand on top of it crumbles. I guess we were supposed to go on top there. Whatever, I'm never playing that level again because it's annoying. And this level introduces you to how annoying the jumping can be. Kind of amazed I made that jump first. On the first try, anyway. Also, music for some reason. There was not music in the previous level. But here's the fun thing you can do. You can just bounce around like a retard after you die. Um, it really just serves to prolong the death animation. Also, momentum is conserved in an incredibly awkward way. When you jump off of stuff, you continue going at the exact momentum. So yeah, imagine Mario combined with massive precision for no reason, and really bad controls. And that's basically, oh my god, I just vomited inside my brain. Um, so yeah, just simple timing there, really. Oh god, you son of a whore. Yeah, we got this, don't we? Yeah. That's fun. That's just fun. I like this. This is this is pleasant. Oh, and the screen doesn't always follow you when you jump like that. So you die. So that's annoying as hell. And um, I, I would use more formal terms and everything, but this game is just so amazingly frustrating and annoying and awkward that... Yeah. Also, there's this level. Why is this here? You can go to the left. Um... And then there's just this thing here that you can't possibly get past. There's no explanation. There's no apparent reason for it to be there. Um, why don't you just make it so there's only one way to go? And then there's also this unnecessary clutter down here. I, It's just so very hard to figure out what the hell is going on and to actually play this game. You know, if you want to do fancy stuff, you can do it in the background. You're not doing anything with the background at all, actually. Uh, and jumping on enemies, the enemies are so small, and so is your character, that this ridiculous slippery speed and precision is absolutely unnecessary. The crabs are probably the best enemy, because, you know, it's fairly easy to land on them. But then there's lots of others, like that turtle over here. Ugh. And they apparently jump. Don't remember that. But yeah... Why does that one jump? The other ones don't jump. Whatever. But yeah, forget the turtle. So yeah, you continue along. Also, the these things on the platform just sort of serve as clutter. I guess you avoid having... Also, the stacks of enemies I don't particularly approve of, because they're just sort of a pain to remove. They're listed as a feature. Um, also, what? What am I doing here? Oh, one thing I do really like, the, the animation is like kind of amazingly smooth for the you know lo-fi aesthetic like look how smoothly he crouches the it's really nicely animated but what am I doing here there's an arrow down so am I supposed to go down because it there's nothing to do here so yeah, the levels are extremely confusing and randomly non-linear let's fall down this pit oh we can't because it's only one block thin I'm not sure why, but your character... Oh, it's just incredibly hard to fall down those pits. It's not impossible. And there's an armadillo here, for absolutely no reason. Also, apparently only this stage has music. Uh, like, seriously, that's the only stage that has music. Oh, I guess this one does too. And there's this guy. I don't... Yeah, there doesn't seem to be any way to get past him, so... Once again, we have a non-linear level for no apparent reason. So let's go down here and see what's down here. Well, there's springboards back here. Also, sometimes stuff scrolls off screen and you can never access it again. So you can get trapped here. Forever! Haha! <laughs> That's fun! And you have to refresh the game, because there's apparently... I mean, for refresh the web page. Because there does not seem to actually be any way to restart the level. Yeah, those controls here. Spaces to pause, apparently. Not sure why you would need to. But yeah, the design is just so cluttered. It's so counterintuitive in every possible way. The controls are just awkward. Maybe it would make more sense if I had played the last two Last Man games. But the thing is, I shouldn't have to. I, 
should be able to play the first level of your game without any trouble. You know, you may think it's boring to just have a first level that's extremely easy in every freaking game ever, but there's damn good reason for that, because if I get frustrated by the first level, I just stop playing right there. In fact, I the only reason I even looked at this game beyond that was because I thought this would be a good example to show you. Um, th these are all of the usability things that you totally destroyed and made an incredibly painful experience. Also, let's see if it does this. Yeah, for some reason if you're standing on the snail and you fall down here, you're alive. The snail apparently clogs at the bottom of the screen and you can just stand there. So It's got a lot of glitches too. At least I assume that's a glitch. Also, yeah, there is stuff down here so it seems like maybe you're supposed to drop down. Except you can't kill this guy so I don't know what you're doing here. Also, you can get stuck. Why can you control the character after he dies? It just causes glitches. But yeah, it seems like... Yeah, it seems like there's some reason to s just drop straight down here. But why is the scrolling one way then, if your game's not going to be linear? So that just makes it... If I have to go left and down, and going right removes the stuff to the left of me, how am I supposed to interact with it? But it seems completely unnecessary. The design is just so cluttered and awkward, it's just extremely difficult to figure out what you're even trying to do. It's like, if Mario was remotely like this, no one would remember it, because Mario would have been a terrible game, and that would be very unfortunate. Because, like, look at this. If you ended up at this, in the first stage of Mario, there's no hint of what to do at all. There's no way to interact with anything. You would just, you know, throw down the console, or the controller, and be like, what the hell is this? And stop playing. Which is what I should have done. You know, it... It has some potential, it just does not, does not realize it at all. Also, the menu... Um, you know, for a Flash game, I won't complain too much about the menu, but it very, it's very unprofessional and ugly looking. It does... One thing I do like, though, is since the levels are so impossible, it lets me actually check out all of the different levels that are all impossible. Because if it was only the first level, that's all I could show you, is me not knowing how on earth to finish this dumb level. And these, yeah, those really don't look like spikes. When you're dealing with incredibly lo-fi aesthetic, you gotta work, you gotta be very careful of what you're doing to make things look dangerous or safe. Which is why I generally don't recommend the Atari style look. Because even in some of the best Atari games, and best is a relative term, um, it's extremely hard to figure out what the hell lots of things are trying to be. That's not good. And if that's going to be an issue, um, you should do, like, in-stage tutorials or something, you know, show off what something is. And, you know, just, you can just have little dialogue boxes, even, that show, um, that say, oh, this thing here is a spike that, you know... If you touch that narrow end of the sprite, it will kill you. And I think my ability to even do that is also a glitch that is unintended, but it allows me to actually play this stupid level. I'm not sure if that's good or not. I'm sorry if I'm sounding kind of mean, but this... Uh, I do really like how well this animates, though. If you watch the little... It really does have all four states. It doesn't recycle animation frames, so it's really well animated. And for the lo-fi aesthetic that doesn't quite fit the complexity it's trying to have, it, the stuff is well, mostly well drawn. It's just not playable at all. And there's so much stuff in areas that I can't interact in. Why are you? Why are you doing that? It just makes it hard to grasp what's going on. You know. Follow the KISS principle. Keep it simple, stupid. There's... Why is that even there, for example? You know, it's not quite an obstacle. It's... It's overly complex for an obstacle. It's just that first, uh... Yeah. Just, I... I hope you understand that almost everything in here is incredibly unusable and awkward, and maybe... I, I hope they... The creator had someone to, you know, test this. There's a reason you don't test your games yourself, because, you know, 
you know why all of this is here. You are not an unbiased source, you know. If you might have something that's incredibly impossible to figure out and extremely unintuitive, but since you thought out the logic, you already understand it and it seems logical to you. So let's see what happens when I stand on the turtle. See, the, there's some unnecessarily complex stuff, like the fact that you can blow up the turtles that also is just random. And no music! I'm not sure why that is. And let's also note that I still have no idea how to complete any of the levels in this entire game. And it's been 15 minutes and I haven't figured out a single one of them. And there's... You know... There's nothing apparent that I can do in any of them. Unless there's like some button. Let's let's crouch. Yeah, that doesn't that doesn't work. There doesn't appear to be any way to do anything. Maybe that's intentional. Maybe this game is just trying to troll you. But I just wanted to make an example of it and show. Don't make this game. Just don't. Please refrain from doing so. And there are apparently two other games in the Last Man series or something. It's called Last Man 3 anyway, so I assume that is such. So, were the last two this bad? I don't know. Or maybe there's some massive epiphany that playing the first two would give me. What the hell is that? Okay, I turned red. And I died. Okay. Whatever. Um, but if the creator is watching or anyone related um i don't want to be too mean it's just this game needs a lot of work in the usability department the animation surprisingly fluid for you know atari graphics i don't personally particularly approve of this style of aesthetic it's not quite you know with the early nintendo you could pretty much tell what stuff was atari less so it was just, it just looked kind of crappy. 8-bit is, you know, kind of charming and everything. Whatever the hell Atari was. Less so. And that, and that puts you inside of a wall, too. That's, that's not good. And the level disappearing as, you know, you jump and stuff. It's not really pleasant. Um... Especially not when that happens. Also, the jumping. Yeah, if you're going to require me to turn left in midair to op operate those platforms, you should make it not impossible to turn left in midair. Because it's nearly impossible to do that. So yeah. Also, why is this arrest stop? Whatever. Just please don't make this game. Please don't make anything like this game. Ever. Addendum. Apparently, I found out what you can do with this crab hat, it apparently is. So there is a way to kill this guy with moronically precise jumping. Yeah, you gotta do that. Um, also, I left the screen running, or the game running, at this screen outside of this box, and that guy just kind of died. So, uh, I initially thought you just had to wait a bit, but then I figured out you actually can kill him. Also, you can scale this, but the way it does is going to make your brain explode. So, um, what you do is that. How does that make any goddamn sense? I don't know. But apparently moving to the left after you jump makes you jump higher. So this, okay, yeah, that also. How are you supposed to know that holding down makes you into a crab once you have this red thing? So yeah, what you're supposed to do is get that red thing and... For some reason, you can't turn into a crab on grass. Why does this make sense? It doesn't. Also, you're supposed to kill him when you're a crab. But apparently that didn't work this time. So whatever. But, in closing, this game is still terrible, but in slightly more ways than I first imagined. 